Yahoo Prof here with uh, part two of. Oh, I'm covering up the. Nope, we're good. Part two of the recent tech update here, and I'm with Gertrude. You know, she's a little cutie. She's over grooming a little bit. Um, but uh, let's get part two down in the basement here. Um, it is more of a mess than usual uh, because we're cleaning up. And it really always seems like part, step one of cleaning up is making the mess bigger. Because you got to move it someplace else before you can tidy it up. So, uh, let's get going. Um, this was an old file cabinet that was in my office. Popped it here. Um, better storage for controllers and stuff. More accessible. You know, super simple. Nothing crazy. But uh, it was like under the desk in my office. Um... Over here, we have a bunch of new anime. Um, so I might have gone over weathering with you before. Um, turns out my first 4K Blu-ray was bad. Um, so that's the why it went read and why in my home theater PC and I even brought upstairs to the desktop, which both have uh, 4K Blu-ray drives. Um, it would just like like that constantly. Um, and at times it would even say it was reading, but it would never play back. It would just cycle through or go slow to fast, real slow. And then up, down, up, it, something wasn't right. Got a new limited edition. They actually happened to have one at my local Best Buy. Very odd because I thought I had to pre-order it or whatever. Um, but, uh, this one worked right away. Pop it in, 30 seconds later, you're playing. So, I, all the RMAs. That's all I got to say. Follow me on Twitter. Look up hashtag all the RMAs. I forget which one of you fine folks made that hashtag for me. But, uh, yeah, uh, even with 4K Blu-rays, apparently. Um, we've also got, um, this is one that I actually got back-ordered. I don't know if it was by the company due to COVID, I think. Um, an anime I've wanted to rewatch for a long, long time. Uh, EF, Tale of um, Memories and Melodies. Um, the visuals on this are just really, really, really good. Um, stories probably in character design is pretty generic because if I recall, it's based on like a dating sim. But um, it's done by Shaft um, back in the like, I think it's like 2007 it came out-ish. So early digital era. Um so it still has, like, the look of hand-drawn, but in digital, because they hadn't completely given up yet. Um, and a very unique look from Shaft, as always. Uh, if you haven't seen this one, and you're into, like, uh, romance anime, that sort of, th that sort of thing, um, give it a shot. Uh, it's done well, in my opinion. Like, story-wise, and especially visually. Um... We also had uh, Genius Party. If you haven't seen this one, I know there was actually somebody who bought it off of the link I posted on Twitter. Um, if you're into anime as an art, this is a must-see. I remember when this was only available in Japan, and I watched a like uh, DVD fan-subbed version, and that was the only way to get it. Like, And that was for the first one. Um, we're talking... I don't know when this came out. Probably early digital era. So we're talking. Does it even say on here? I'm thinking like pretty early, like uh, pre, like pre 2007. I want to say. I might be wrong. Um, correct me, I guess, in the comments. But that's a must see. It's from Studio 4C. Um, just these little shorts. Um, if you watched The Animatrix and liked it, or Memories, um, same sort of thing except more modern and from one of the most groundbreaking studios uh, out there, in my opinion at least. Um, finally picked up uh, Tokyo Godfathers. I didn't have this one. Um, and this is like the new remastered 4K, or from 4K Master to Blu-ray edition. Now, uh, the next pickups were, it's from the New World. Um, and how I ended up getting this was I saw on, I get Robert's anime corner store. Uh, he's like, uh, a, a very long, uh, been around a long time anime, uh, retailer. 
Um, that's not one of like the mainstream guys. He's an independent one. And he was saying how the, like not the separate volumes, but like the complete set was going out of print. And if you wanted to pick it up, um, I didn't even realize that. Um, and uh, that one is also only three discs. If you get the, uh, two separate part one in collection, one in collection two, it is four discs, two discs per. And, um, so it's going to be better quality because there's less episodes per disc, which means each episode is a higher quality. Um, and I actually ended up finding a copy on uh, eBay. Kind of sad story. Guy lost his job, was selling his collection um, to offset that. Um, and uh, what this is actually signed, too. I don't know if you can see some of them back there. Um, so I was happy to pay a little bit more um, due to that. And because... I could find, like, Collection 1 or Collection... I think Collection 2 was super expensive in comparison. This, this is what I found shortly after those NAS America ones I was I had upstairs. I was kind of on a streak of finding used anime um, and stuff that's out of print. Like, th this... The, the, the complete collection is out of print, much less the Collection 1 and 2. Um, collection 2 also signed um, two discs. I've been wanting to rewatch this one for... A long, long time. Um, like, uh, me and my friends actually prefer, like, a certain fan subbing group. Because this was not out for many, many years. Um, between it being in Japan and the U.S. And if I recall, like, certain episodes were either not aired or cut out on the U.S. release. Um, at a minimum, I'll probably be watching the uh, sub version of this, even though it was dubbed. Um, just... It's going to feel weird otherwise. Uh, might even find a way to put the fan subs that we really liked on the Blu-ray. Just because it's going to be way better quality than that encode, more than likely. Um, but uh, finally, great to have these. I'm really happy to have the Collection 1 and 2. Um, and that they were signed is even better. Um, and I told the uh, guy selling them, like, these are going to a good home with a collection. You know, they're not going to leave. Um, so... Uh, yeah, this is one, if you haven't seen it, watch it. I don't want to ruin it. it it's definitely a modern classic. Um, it, it gave me, like, the chills at certain points. Like, it, it's very, very well done. Um, I guess another thing I will say, too, for me personally, I watch sub and dub. This one, specifically, if you look, uh, very Japanese-style uniform, or definitely not, at least not U.S., um, also, I originally watched it subbed, which is why I probably will eventually watch it subbed. That's how I kind of get into that. Um, also, s stuff that's not really based in Japan or, like, definitely European or whatever, I will usually start with a dub unless it irks me in some way. Because um, I have no problem watching a dub if it's done well. Um, and most dubs nowadays are done well. So the other one from the same seller that I wasn't planning on buying uh, was Colorful. Uh some people have some problems with this anime. I really like it. I remember watching it and being like stunned that I hadn't seen it because it, it. I think this came out in two thousand seven. Might be twenty ten. The here. Twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. I swear it's a twenty ten anime, but like I know for a fact I didn't watch it till many 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 years later. Um, and it's really, really good. The visuals in it looks gorgeous. I have so many screenshots from it from when I was watching. And this one's also signed. Um, the guy selling these on eBay um, seemed to like to get his stuff signed. I've barely gotten any of mine, um, except for stuff for uh, Yoshitoshi Abe. Because um, these are seem to be mostly like U.S. dub voice actors. Voice actors aren't a huge thing for me. Like... I mean, if they're bad, I'll notice, but I don't pick up. Um, I mean, I do appreciate they're signed. They'll be in my collection. Um, but yeah, watch this one. It's very good. Um, I think it deserves all of its rewards. Some people might say it's pretty straightforward, but if it's just very well done. And I can definitely appreciate that. All right, so uh, that's a lot of anime. Hopefully you guys are into anime. Uh, sorry for not. Uh, you can skip this part. 
Um, if you have any questions on my tastes or collections or what I thought, obviously hit me up in the comments below or on Twitter. It's at the prophesis for me personally or at tech exchange the for the website. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the workroom and uh, I don't know if there's really been progress here. It doesn't look like it, but oh, there there is. There's nothing behind the door. Well, we were trying to figure out what to do back here. And then I remembered, hey, this area is essentially like behind the door. So why don't I make the shelves the same way? And so we are. Uh, that is a two by eight on top of cinder blocks. You want a sturdy shelf? That there is one sturdy AF shelf, according to um, Home Depot, because obviously I had to order some more of these and figure out how I'm getting them. Each one of those cinder blocks is 38 pounds. Um, I think that's the full eight, eight foot length here. Um, cause they're going to be two by eight in two inches by eight inches by eight foot. Um, and you gotta remember a two by four or two by eight isn't, it's like one and a half by three and a half for a two by four by eight foot. Um, but yeah, so this is the way that these are going to go. Now, if you look here, there's actually more room to the door, uh, measuring on the back side here, we actually have 16 inches back to the wall, which is actually two cinder blocks. So uh, basically, and I'm going to stand back a whole bunch more, The this has progressed to two cinder blocks deep by to that PVC pipe there, which is about 72 inches up to the PVC pipe up there. Um, and uh, that'll be one nice shelf. I believe it's five shelves I'm doing. Uh, the bottom shelf, 24 inches off the ground. Um, if you're running a cinder block is eight inches by eight inches by 16 inches. So especially with needing too deep, the math is super easy to do. Um, I might go over that in a video or I might just go over it once it's done. But the top shelf, or not the top shelf, because top shelf is gonna be a board, but the shelf below the top shelf will only be an eight inch. Um, and that's so that we can have a 24 on the bottom. So if you have like a you know, big tall box, like you see there, you can just put it on the ground and slide it there rather than having to lift it up and put it someplace. Um, after figuring this out and being done so easily, uh, these are actually old long boards here, old wood ones that haven't been used in forever, but that's good finished wood. That is what's going on the right here. Um, those, instead of being 16 inches wide, edge to edge are 18, but I'm going to use the same technique with the center blocks here, which is means I'm going to not have to drill into the concrete wall at all. Um, and uh, that shelf is moving. We're going to only one foot deep shelves on the left here based on some wooden two by fours I have. But on this right wall, there's going to be two sets of these long board shelves and uh, five, all, five shelves. So basically very similar to there, except two sets from here, um, floor to ceiling. It's going to be great. You know, plenty of storage between this, on this side, five shelves. There's going to be six shelves here. One in, or they're going to be a foot deep. Um, and that's, they're about 12 feet back. So 12 foot of shelves that way, 12 foot of shelves that way. And then, um, I think it was like 72 or so inches, which is, I think it's a bit over six feet, if I recall correctly. Um, right there. So that's a ton of storage. Um, eventually that pegboard will, or then it's looking pretty ratty actually. Um, but we'll have pegboard above the workbench there. And then that whole wall is highly likely to become shelving as well. And because my cinder block ideas are working out so well, it may just get replicated. Um, now I made a really shitty, you can see it on the floor, like stuff has been here, uh, paint booth thing. I'm probably going to come up with some way to actually make a paint booth. Uh, above the, uh, what do you call it thing? Not a sump pump, uh, but there's the hole in the ground for if you're, maybe that is a sump pump, but if your uh, basement leaks or whatever, not to cover it up, but you know, like above, off the ground and just to play a place so I can paint into that I vent someplace outside. Um, but yeah, so this one's going to go first, super easy. Uh, the cuts for the boards, because I don't have boards for this one here 
are something that they should be able to do for me at Home Depot because it's just cutting the end off and then cutting it down to three pieces. Um, that's just going to be buying cinder blocks. And I actually had to figure out the load uh, amount because uh, I'll be borrowing, borrowing uh, a minivan to carry these and I want to make sure I don't overload the minivan. Um, 30 cinder blocks seems to be fine, um, like well within the limits. Um, and I'll need 33 here because there will also be three on top and over there i'll need 60. so that'll be two trips this will be one trip this tech update is uh, ended up being pretty long but uh there's been a lot of stuff going on and not all that much that i've actually been able to finish sadly and there's a gertrude again how are you are you good All right, if anybody needs any uh, X79 or X99 CPUs, let me know. Or some RAM that's over there. Um, uh, this has progressed. We have all the brackets. I think I showed you that last episode. Right here was the board. Um, it's now out over here, this white one. Which you see right there. It's going to have to get cut down just to length. I can do that with a jigsaw. Uh, could use a circular saw too. Jigsaw is probably going to be easier. And that's going to go up here. Now, these anime are in a specific uh, order. Uh, one thing that will change is I'll probably be pulling out the Ghibli films because I want to keep them all together. Um, but they're in the order actually that I got them. So around there is when I started buying anime when I started working at Best Buy. So it'd be about 2014 uh, ish. So from there, going through. Um, and it's in the order that I bought it, which is an interesting way to have it. And just because it's in the order that I bought it doesn't mean it's a newer or older anime. It's just how I got it. Um, and I want to kind of try and maintain that. Maybe minus, like, pulling the Ghibli stuff out or there's, like, a ghost in the shell that needs to get put over there, etc. But I got to pull all these down, maintain the order as best I can. Um, and then we get to drill the holes up there for those brackets. Now, um... I do have the shop back, fixed back up. Um, that just got finished tonight. It's right over there. So we can use that and not get concrete dust, ever, dust everywhere. Um, still gonna use the old respirator so we don't inhale any of that. Um, Cause when I mounted this, that was not very fun. Um, and we have much bigger anchors for this shelf up there. Um, all the way on the right side above, um, is going to be these and you saw a bunch of them upstairs so i'm going to keep all of the premium collection or premium edition and i asked america stuff pushed all the way to the right side and then whatever's on this shelf because as you can see it's getting towards the end will then continue after those um at least that's my plan or i might put ghibli up there as well um just because i know it can't fit over here and then uh, we do have shorter brackets than even these i think um for a third shelf up here now once we do the height difference here i don't know if that third shelf is going to be tall enough to have house dvds and blu-rays and stuff if it can't i have a ton of cds behind the door and that's what will go up there so um for mounting this i'm gonna use the same type of anchors that i used here which are those plastic ones you drill into the concrete pound the plastic one in and then put a screw that tightens the plastic into like it pushes the plastic out into the concrete that being that these aren't going to be like human bearing surfaces they're going to have like dvds or there's some computer parts on that one um that's plenty 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 strong um but yeah that's all here that's probably going to happen during the christmas break like either eve or christmas since I'm not doing anything really during those. Uh, the server needs to get started, but I don't want to do that until that shelf and that shelf are up. Um, let's see. Oh, over here, we have my next mouse project. Let's see if we get a bit more light. Um, this is my, gonna be my last Rival 106. And it's going to be using the GM 2.0 switches. These are the 
blue, light blue ones here. Uh, as you can see, they're the older style where the clips are still on the on the short sides, not the long ends. So we'll see how these go. These are supposedly the original ones from Kale uh, that fixed the double click issue. And then from there, they've just been improving the feel. Um, besides that, we have new mouse feet um, right there. And then we have uh, this new cable. Um, I thought that this is probably the most flashy of the cables that I personally bought. And then I have two different grips that I could add. I either have this uh, green, um, cause I thought that blue was more green than it is, or I have the yellow. I think both go with the kind of teal and yellow here. Now yellow is personally more my color, so it's probably the direction I'm gonna go. Um, but yeah, hit me up in the comments below and let me know which of those two, uh, cause I put them on the fingers. Cause for whatever reason on this mouse, it's got matte sides, glossy top. For whatever reason, my fingertips on my right hand, like when I'm clicking away, if you saw it upstairs on those, I put it just on left and right click ahead of the scroll wheel. Cause for some reason on this mouse, my fingertips get very sweaty um, and they slip. Um, and since I'm modifying them ready, might as well take them to the next level like I did on the other ones. Um, let me know what color you would go with. By the way, those are not cheap, but I do have a link down in the description for them. It's, uh, both the mouse feet and the grips are from uh, Tacosta. Um, very well regarded um, guy in the mouse community. Uh, I've gotten my mouse feet from him for from years, and it seems like he's expanded a bit more. He also does have the Rival 106s, I believe. Um, otherwise, I do have links to Corn Electronics, who will gladly uh, import some of those. Um, and uh, they're a uh, like licensed retailer in China. So you don't have to worry about getting a fake, because that is a big thing about buying SteelSeries and Razer. Since they are Chinese brands and manufactured in China, and especially like this is a Chinese exclusive mouse, is very, very common and easy to get fakes. Like look up Death Adder on eBay. 90% of those that you see are fakes. Now, with the Rival 106, there was also only the 105. It's pretty rare. Um, but even though I pay a little bit more going through them, I do know I'm getting legit. Um, they've also gotten me uh, the Death Adder Mini before it was in the U.S. They've gotten me the Pikachu earbuds. They got me the Pikachu Death Adder uh, combo. You know, I, I trust them. Um they, they, or they should say that they've gained my trust. And uh, the last thing here in this tech update, and this is in preparation for doing, you know, projects like that, and I have a bunch of keyboard stuff that I'm going to end up wanting to doing. And, you know, I've been just wanting to chill more after work and less working, less working on PC. Once that server's done, until I need to do an upgrade or something, not touching it. Just going to use it. Um, just because it's my day-to-day. -day. I have finally... Oh, this one can come out of here. I have finally put together a basically full collection of uh, players and snippers, all from Lind Lindstrom. Uh, there you go. Um, I've had these for the longest time, and they actually did get replaced. That's a new one of the exact same kind, because you can kind of see it on the tip here. At some point, if you either use this thing, cut something that wasn't it was like too big, that or that wasn't supposed to, um, or I've also had it for uh, six years. So um, this thing has built at least six years. This thing has built a ton of keyboards and other small electronics, but mostly keyboards is what I bought this for for clipping off uh, diodes and um, uh, resistor legs, stuff like that. Um, or, uh, like teensy legs, stuff like that. Um, and, uh, I've always intended on buying, like, this is basically the smallest one you can buy. Um, and these were recommended to me by a, a buddy from Geek Hack, uh, back in the day who does as a living, he does like PCB rework, um, and like PCB prototyping. And this is basically what he stood by. And a lot of the industry seems to stand by them. Um, 
This one's going to be kind of for doing things I don't want to do with the good ones. That's also why you buy these really cheap ones from Menards um, for $2, or I think they're $3 now, where they're technically a flush cutter, but they're so chintzy that if you cut something you're not supposed to, like I cut like a lot of fan connectors, like the plastic parts with these. Um, I've had not my nice Lindstrom ones, but, you know, better than this, actually break the thing off because you're cutting way bigger or different things than you're supposed to. These are cheap. So when they get super dull or you cut something too hard or too thick, you just throw them out and get another one. So these are the flush cutters for doing things that you're not supposed to do with flush cutters, or at least that pair of flush cutters. Um, and these are kind of going to become that, but for nice ones. Now, if you guys have an idea of what you would do um, for this last pliers, either if it's another cutter or if it's, so far my idea is a square pliers, you know, like the squared off edges, uh, let me know because um, I am interested. I will go through which ones I ordered. Um, this is the one I originally had. It's just a new one of it, um, brand new. This is their smallest. It's the ultra flush and the smallest head. Um, you can actually, it's thin enough to actually get under, and that's why it's actually cut out there. Like, it's like a re beveled or recessed there. So you actually get under stuff and snip it. Like, cut legs from out under chips, essentially. And that's why I bought that one. Because um, I have, like, they're missing right now, because they're, I'm using them for making network cables, but I have Crescent. Uh, kind of like a, it's like a 20-ish dollar set that I've used for a long time. I have like three sets of them. I've brought them and showed them before in other videos. I was using those, and then these were just for like the really specific small stuff where you need a nice one. Um, that's why I bought them first. And from buying this one, at the time I only had enough money to buy the one, because these are like 50 plus dollars a piece. I would think cheapest one of these is like 40. Um, but they last a long time. As you can see, it's been six years or so. Um, and I'm sure had I been a little bit better, but being that I only had the one, I probably cut some things I probably shouldn't have because I didn't have the bigger ones. Um, then when we go up from here, and, and these, by the way, I ended up buying the exact same ones I spec'd out six years ago because um, that's even within, uh, I would say it was since 2012-ish, since my server died, I've been very good about documenting stuff. So that's since within that period. And I've had pretty much the same mindset since then. Um, and that applies to uh, stuff like this as well. Um, so I ended up buying the same parts. Uh, this is one size bigger. You can see on the head here. One size bigger. Um, and it is just a flush, not an ultra flush. Now, if you notice on the ultra flush, it is like grinded completely flat there. The flush cut is not. But there is no bevel. The actual cut will be flush. Um... It's a little bit bigger, which means you can handle a little bit bigger wires. Um, and then the next size up is the micro bevel. So it's perfect, purposefully a little bit beveled. So when you cut it, it will leave a little bit of an end on there. Sometimes you want that. Um, and you and as you can see on this one, even the handle is bigger on this one here. Um, and the head is much bigger. So and all of these, I don't think this size is available in the Ultra Flush. Like this size is, um, this one's available in that size. That one's available in both of those, if I recall. And this one can go down a size as well. This for me was my, um, uh, the best way for me was, you know, like smallest is the most flush and then it gets bigger and less flush as it goes. Let me know what you think about that. I mean, maybe you want ultra flush for everything. Um, you know, it's all about preference. The one thing I will say about these, because I had to set all these up, is they ship a bit tight on the screw. Um, so you're going to loosen that and get it to where you like it. For me, it's just so the screw barely grabs. Like, so it's not loosening as you're using it. But I don't want it much tighter than that because I like it to open up real easy and snappy-like. Apparently, I'm overheating the uh, Pixel 5 here. But we got to finish this. And uh, the other ones we have here are just some pretty standard pliers. They're just nice. Lindstrom as well. This one is uh, round nose with ser serrated. Um, 
you know, basically what a lot of people would just call a needle nose players. Um, but that's technically a round nose. Um, then we have a round nose, non serrated, just flat. Sometimes, like that's the, the grooves are for, the serrated grooves are for if you need to grip something, like hold on to it, like you're pulling or something like that. Otherwise, if you're just holding, the flat is much nicer to use as you're not going to mar it as well. And then what we have here is a snipe no, snipe round nose. So it's if you notice, it's considerably shorter here um, and also smooth. Um, I'm going to tell you that kind of like the smallest guy here, this if I had to buy one, this is probably the one I would buy. Um, I'm probably going to get the most use out of it. And the next one would be the serrated because I you know, need grip every now and then. Um, and, uh, so I'm thinking for this last guy here, it'll be on our pliers and I'm thinking the square one, like, you know, it's going to be perfectly flat with flat sides too. Uh, let me know, um, which one you guys would go with. It doesn't even have to be a pliers necessarily. Um, this is from their Supreme series. The white ones are the Lindstrom Supreme series, which is the, uh, pliers and the yellow ones are from the Lindstrom 80 series, which is... I wouldn't say they're highest end, but it has the most options. Um, their original line as well. Um, and uh, here we have one of the more unique ones that I actually had to get through Amazon rather than I normally get these through Allspec as they're a, like a licensed reseller of Lindstrom. Um, but I had to order a pack of 10 of these if I wanted it through Allspec, which uh, I'm not a uh, rework company with multiple employees, so I don't need 10. Now, why this one is interesting is if you'll notice, it was actually sitting with the screw the opposite way. And that's because it's a bit of a reverse here. You don't cut like, you know, like like that or something. The blades are right there, and they're flush cut, not ultra flush, even though they're cut flat there. And the angle at which you cut is actually like that. So quite angled, and they're quite thin to be able to reach under things. Um, or if you don't want to have your hand all that close to a PCB, really nice for cutting off stuff that way. Um, and this is one back in the day that, uh, buddy from the, uh, keyboard forms that does rework really, really recommended was this style. I don't know if he's specific. This is the long nose version. Um, for me, I preferred that since it had more reach. I don't know if that specific one, but this style with the, like the reverse ended cutters that have this extreme angle on it, he said were really, really nice, um, for working with. So I picked those up as well as kind of like, uh, an additional option here. Um, well, guys, I, I know that went on for just about forever. Um, we might <laughs> I'd probably chop this up, I have a feeling, and uh, put it up like that rather than a full 30-minute clip for part two. So there might be part, you might have seen part 2.2 and part 2.3. Either way, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, obviously, on any of this stuff, Hit me up in the comments below. And as always, I'm at The Prophecist. Um, you can find me most readily on Twitter, um, but I'm available on most, if not all, social media. And uh, the website is the-tech-exchange.com. You can even get us directly on YouTube now with just youtube.com slash the tech exchange. We finally got that, thanks to you guys who subscribed. Um, hopefully you've been enjoying the content and uh, the knowledge and experience I have to share. Um, as always, we'll see you in the next one.